So this one, hopefully by the time you've gone through the previous ones, you're like, oh, actually in some ways this is not so bad. Number one, did you notice, I know Sean called it out, but maybe you didn't hear, this graph, or both of the graphs rather, that we're multiplying together, they are really nice looking. They have symmetry. Did you notice that? What kind of symmetry do both of the parabolas have? They both have it along the y-axis. We have a name for this. Starts with an E. Even. It's even symmetry, right? So you're like, oh, if it's even symmetry for both of them, you take two symmetrical objects, you put them together, guess what? You'll get another symmetrical object. Does that make sense? So everything you do on one side ends up mirroring over to the other. You're like, cool, half the work, right? Um, how much have I, what have I shaded? Do you notice what I've shaded? Negative. It's all below. Why is that? Because they're all in negative two. As you go from left to right, right, one of the graphs is always positive, and then the other graph will be negative. Positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, irrespective of size. So long as you multiply a positive number by a negative one, you'll always get a negative result. Okay? And then you can like, oh, it's just going to wiggle around a whole lot, right? So I'm going to try and do my best to join the dots. I'm going to get something like that. And then it's going to go down like that. Oops, that's gone. Let me try that again. There we go. By the way, a quick thing that I wanted to point out. Um, again, it's just a point of, I'm just going to point it out as an interesting thing and we'll think of explanations later. Um, this is a cubic. Part B was a cubic. Do you remember that? How many stationary points does it have? One. Two. Uh, one. Uh, two. Two. One. Two. Uh, this guy here, it's a parabola, right? How many stationary points does it have? One. one. This guy here is a quartic. How many stationary points does it have? Three. That's okay. interesting. Something which has. Oh, wait, one last one. Uh, whoops, I can't slide this thing. Um, straight line. Straight line here. How many stationary points does it have? No stationary points. Think about this, right? This is x to the power of 1. It has no stationary points. This is x to the power of 2. It has one stationary point. x to the power of 3 has two stationary points. And then lastly, x to the power of 4 has 3. Or it can have 3 anyway. That's interesting, isn't it? Just park that thought for now. Okay, so two things, bless you. I realize that I've never actually written on the board or said explicitly, like we, we, we know what it looks like when you are, when algebraically, when you're doing the reciprocal, that's the, what the reciprocal looks like. Um, I've never actually written, what, does, what are we doing, right? This is what we are doing. If you get, this is by the way, that's the, I did my best to try and I think that's, I think I've got the equations right. Um, if you've got two functions, what we're actually calculating is, or graphing rather, what is one function multiplied by the other one? f of x multiplied by g of x. Okay? Now I just wanted to show this example because I've been having a look at what you guys have done and um, some of them, the shape's good, other ones it's like, mm, you, you need more points to get more accuracy. Because when you put these together, would you please compare this? I'll just make it black so it stands out a little more. Would you compare this to what you've got? Now. Have a look at your shape. Have a look at this shape. Do you notice it's smooth all the way through? There are some wiggles, but they're the kinds of things you expect at fairly significant points, right? Um, you can see it should be able, I should be able to draw one smooth line all the way through. A lot of you, it's kind of like, it sort of zigzags around. What that comes down to is, okay, do you have enough points to know where this is going? And are the points that you're putting on, are they accurate, right? So the more accurate you'll be, the, the better you can. And I know for some of these, it's quite hard to read what's going on. We promise if we give you a graph and assessment, it will be big enough that you can actually see where every single value is. And the actual upshot is, the less accurate the graph they hand you is, the less accuracy you're expected to. If there's like a grid, like a super ultra fine grid on this, like so, okay, there's no excuses. Because you know where every single value is, you can read it off there, right? So we will expect you to also be precise. Does that make sense?